Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video about Backbone.js. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to use Backbone.js, some of the fundamentals, and also go over a couple underscore functions. Underscore JS also belongs to the Backbone.js family, and it uh, works pretty well. I'll go over all of those. So I'm on the Backbone.js website, and you can get here by just typing backbonejs.org. You can also do a simple Google search. Here I'm using the you know, browser Safari. If I were to type in Google and just type in Backbone.js, you can see that the first result I get is Backbone.js, and that'll get you over there. Uh, Backbone.js is pretty cool in that it helps speed up website development. If you've ever done any kind of website development before, you know that uh, there's certain three stages of like web development. One is kind of like the planning phase, the second is like the execution and development, and then after that is kind of the changes that come after with time. <laughs> um, if you work you know, with uh, small businesses, you won't really expect that much to change from time to period to period. I would say, you know, like working with uh, small businesses, this could be like personal trainers, it could be chefs, restaurants, uh, you probably will get changes and for somebody who uh, has to have, maintain their website. And usually WordPress is a pretty good solution, especially because they can go in and change some of the content on their own using the WordPress features. Uh, you get into more trouble though when you know things need to change on a constant basis. Uh, one of the things with like WordPress is that uh, you know the website uh, is built in the language PHP, and PHP is not the best language you want to use for scaling. Um, especially if you have like many many people visiting your website. Take for example if you were USA Today uh, that gets like millions of users per month uh, checking out their website and of course on top of that USA Today is changing a ton of their content all the time you know massively changing content. It's a lot of traffic so you're gonna need something that is going to be a little bit more um, you know able to meet the demands of your users and also the demands of your clients. So that's what I mean by um, you know frameworks and backbone and why we'd even be interested in something like this. Um, frameworks, you know, some people built their own frameworks. So using the PHP, you know, some people build their own frameworks in PHP. Um, some people build their own frameworks in Ruby on Rails, and uh, you know, that works well for these people or their companies, you know, especially like uh, Twitter or, you know, I think uh, Facebook uses PHP. Uh, but the problem is that, uh, you know, it starts out sort of like a, you know, built-in company solution or a homegrown solution. And, uh, you know, over time, you know, as you start adding more complexity to it, it becomes harder and harder to maintain. So uh, if you're a developer and you're kind of coming in, there's a lot of training time that, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it comes to the territory of joining a company, uh, but you know, the company may need changes like right away, or you know, if you're working with high-end clients, they may need to like continue business as usual. So, with all the different homegrown solutions out there, there had to be some sort of you know uni unity, like there had to be some sort of standard. And um, you know, I think what you see is now like more and more companies are adopting like framework standards. And actually pushing it on the web developers to learn these standards. Backbone.js is a framework that has standards. It's built in entirely in JavaScript. So the nice thing is if you know HTML and CSS and you know JavaScript, you don't have to go and learn a you know, fourth language like PHP or even Ruby on Rails. Uh, I think that just makes it all super confusing. So you know, the nice thing to do is, uh, you know, the nice thing about Backbone.js is that it is pure JavaScript, like I said. You know, if you look at the source code here, I'm going to click on the development version. Um, you can see pretty much like everything, you know, um, written out for you. It's open source. You can go in here and check out how exactly this framework works, and then you can decide, you know, is this framework something you want to use? You know, if you're going to build like a high-end um, you know, application website that is going to work with a lot of, you know, a lot of users hitting it. Um, some people may decide that Backbone's not for them. You know, they want to continue using PHP or Ruby on Rails to like handle servers, websites, uh, you name it. Um, 
but uh, you know, it's always it, it comes back down to like preference. You know, if you if you feel comfortable in other languages and you don't like JavaScript, um, you actually think JavaScript is not a very useful language. I would say to you, uh, you know, go ahead and stick with the language that you're using. But you know, that said, JavaScript is a pretty powerful language in itself, and it has been taken more seriously in the last few years. And um, don't just take my word for it. A lot of companies these days, including the companies I just kind of, um, you know, where it's pulling down over here, um, like USA Today, Flick, uh, Radio, Hulu, a lot of these big companies are taking JavaScript pretty seriously, and there's a lot of demand to build uh, JavaScript applications that not are only are running Backbone JS, but also running, uh, you know, uh, backend um, like Node.js and uh, not using, you know, MySQL instead using NoSQL solutions like MongoDB. Mm. It's it's very fast. The that's like the end experience for the user. Um, you know, like if I'm clicking on something, I get data right away with the help of JavaScript and AJAX calls. You know, like if I'm clicking within this map, you know, I should see new results come up. Um, whereas if I clicked on something on WordPress or like a, a you know, another kind of like PHP web page, uh, I have to wait for the entire page to reload or, you know, um, you know, I have to wait for the server to process. There's always a lot of more processing time. In JavaScript, usually everything is pretty instantaneous, which makes for a really good user experience. So with that, that's enough of a bit of an intro to Backbone JS. Like I said, it comes down to preference. Definitely check out the library, but you know, like if you're already comfortable using something else or you have your own home built solution, you don't think this is for you, then that's fine. But if you're open to learning new things and want to try, I definitely say, hey, check it out. And then of course, you know, you never know, you may change your mind.